Welcome to another episode of Behind the Dreamers. I'm your host, Jennifer Loading, and we are talking to the achievers, the creators, the magic makers, and the dreamers. These are our friends. These are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. Well, today's episode, we are going to be peeling back the layers on what it means to navigate life's toughest moments with grace, resilience, and unwavering determination. Imagine juggling the roles of an entrepreneur, author, soon to be podcast host, alongside being a devoted mother, a two, and proud wife. Our guest today embodies the essence of multi-passion pursuit facing life's curveballs head on from navigating personal trauma and pain to making her mark in the competitive world. So I'm excited to chat with her. You guys are like, what is all this about? She is incredible. Great energy. You guys are going to be in for a treat. But before we welcome her on, I do need to do a quick shout out to our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Productions. Need to add excitement to your YouTube videos or some expert hands for editing? Look no further. Walt Mills is the solution you've been searching for. Walt is not only your go-to guy for spicing up content, he's the force behind a thriving film production company with numerous titles in the pipeline. Always on the lookout for raw talent, Walt is eager to collaborate on film and internet productions. With a background deeply rooted in entertainment and promotion, Walt Mills leverages years of skills to give you the spotlight you deserve. Want to learn more about Walt and his work? Head on over to waltmillsproductions.net and let your content shine. All right. And with that, we're ready to bring our guests on today. So Chelsea is a shining example of strength and perseverance as a pioneering force in the construction industry, a field often dominated by men. Chelsea's journey is a beacon of inspiration for anyone striving to carve their own path in challenging environments. Her story is not just about surviving, it's about thriving by transforming adversity into achievement. Chelsea believes in the power of sharing our victories over adversity to offer hope and solidarity to those in similar battles. So welcome to the show, Chelsea. So excited to have you here today. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. It's going to be so much fun because you are just doing cool things. And I know you just had a book release, which is so exciting. Mm -hmm, yeah. And Thank so you. Um, this show is all about you know, our stories, our journey, like what mm -hmm. leads us to where we are, what we've learned in that process, how we can inspire people. And I know you embody all of that. So I really want to open this up and talk a little bit about construction. How did this okay. happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I like to say I wasn't playing with Barbies when I was little and being like, I'm going to own a construction company someday. That definitely was not on the radar at all. <laughs> So like, and I'm sure like many people I've, I fell into it and I'll, I'll kind of say how I fell into it, but I, a lot of people do that when you find, ask them like, how'd you get into what you're doing? So I, um, have a Spanish degree and a broadcast journalism degree, um, from college. I had to do my, um, internship. So I'm from a small town in South Dakota. I moved out to Denver to do my internship, um, did that. And then I just ended up staying and, um, at that point, like I had wanted to be the next Barbara Walters, but then I found out they pay, they make like 20 grand a year and work nights and weekends. And I was like, that sounds horrible. So I, um, just, I took a job because the, the, like six months in, you know, the college bills start coming. I was like, uh, I just literally need a job. So I, um, took a job at a, um, like a temp staffing agency. So I did, I worked at a bunch of random offices in Denver and then that lady passed me on to her sister who was hiring for an experiential marketing and trade show company. So I went and worked. I started as the receptionist there and then worked my way up through the company for about five or six years. And then I kind of just had this feeling that I didn't feel like I was doing anything like that really mattered, you know, in the world. I wasn't making an impact. But then I was like, I have no idea what I want to do. So did some soul searching. Um, and then I actually quit that, got my master's in education and became a high school Spanish teacher for 10 years. Um, so did that till the last year was rough. Like one day a kid called me an effing waste of space. And I was like, okay. And, and then I was, I remember just looking like sitting there in my room and I was like, oh, I don't like this anymore. So I was desperate to move on, but again, had no clue what I was going to do. And I started applying for all these jobs. No one called me at all, like crickets. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh. You know, so I, the only job I got offered was as an office manager for a different uh, construction company. So that's how I got into commercial construction. And then in March of 2020, randomly, because what else are we doing? I started my company 
and I built that um, and work and still work that other full time job until April of 22. So, and that at that point, I'm like, I cannot do this anymore. Like, two legitimate full time jobs is like just yeah. way too much on top of just life, right? It's like right. nope. So yeah, so since then I've been running my company and um we're over doubling every year. I have amazing clients, amazing employees and I'm it's I just am really grateful and proud of where we are right now. You gave me chills. Okay. So <laughs> I have to back up in your story a little bit because I my very first guest today also said the same thing about the journalism thing. She's yeah. like thought I was going to be like the next Barbara Walters or something like that. She mm-hmm. said, then I realized they didn't get paid anything. No. And two people, three people today that said, and all of y'all had been like really good speakers, you know, like it's, it's funny. And they, but they've all said the same thing. I was going to go into journalism and I realized I didn't make any money, you know, yeah. and I think the whole, the, the thing about the education and going into that. And then yes, it, I, these stories, they just, to me, it's so awesome to see how people, sort of transverse through these different things mm-hmm. and end up kind of where they are. And it's not right? like you mentioned playing Barbies in construction. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I want to be in construction when I grow up. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, they're, they're also random and different, like completely different, but I wouldn't change any of it. Cause I learned, I grew as a person through each. I learned like yeah things about myself. I learned skills through all of them. So I'm grateful I went through all of them. And then when you start something new, yeah, it's harder because you're like, wait, what am I doing? You know, but you, I guess I'm proof that you can start something super new, completely new, work really hard, ask questions, learn and be successful still. Yeah. What do you feel like this is, I always like to ask this question when I have somebody on here that's got something like this, like you've done and you've scaled this and you've Mm -hmm. worked it, you've, you've done really well. What do you feel like has contributed to the success? I know you said working hard, but mm-hmm. anything else that you can think of that really you feel like has been the a factor in this business growing mm-hmm. the way it's grown? I would think probably for for me, two things. Like number one, just being myself and being honest. And like this is I'm I try to be really honest with clients. Like if we can't help them, I ask a lot of questions up front. And if we can't help them, I tell them. And then I try if I can to offer a solution. But you know, I'm like, I never want to pass up work, but you know, I I don't want to cause them issues on a construction site. Like it, there's safety, there's lives involved. That's really important. So just being honest and like if they think they want to do one thing, but we recommend something else, we, you know, to consult with them. Um, and really the success has just been relationships completely like, and, and that could go back when I was a teacher too, you won't get anywhere in life. If you're, if you're good at building relationships and getting to know people and caring about that, you'll be successful in whatever you do. Truly. I think because people care about you. Like I can get together with people and we're just talking about, you know, what'd you do this weekend? They were talking about family. We're talking about life and that's what people care about. So, and it just makes it more fun when you work together. So I would say those two things. Mm -hmm. No, I think those are great. And I think the the relation part is so huge and you're right. When you learn that skill, it will Mm -hmm. really transverse into anything that you're doing. And you kind of touched upon that when you said you learn things in each of those areas that you were in and and Mm -hmm. like the education, learning the relationship. Yeah. You know, I, I just talked about this the other day about growth, right? Like I said, you know, I was in 22 years of Mary Kay and I learned a lot of things. I learned a coach, mm-hmm. I learned a book, I learned to sell, I learned all these great skills yep. that really go in all areas. But interestingly enough, we started, you really, you think about it, you had to learn how to build relationships. You had to learn mm-hmm. that. And I talked about this the other day, how it really moved into when I started doing podcasting because I started totally. having kind of more things about people, right? Asking more questions. Mm-hmm. We used to always have the saying, you know, Mary Kay, that nothing would happen until you sell something. Well, nothing really happens in selling until you get to know people. Oh, and totally. Knowing what they need and how you can help them, whether or not you can even help them, right? Mm-hmm. You may not have a solution mm-hmm. for them. And I think it takes a certain amount of uh, willingness to say, I may not be the right fit, but you yeah. being the client is more important. And I need to know whether or not what I have is a, is a fit for you. Mm -hmm. And that you, you, they know if you genuinely care or if you're just trying to make a sale and move on. Right. People know that that's so, you know, right. We know. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, I was having this conversation today with somebody and I'm not going to name anything on this podcast, but I was talking about somebody today. Yeah. So I'm like, this person just strikes me as the type of person that 
the sale is probably more important than to them than the client relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we as humans can pick up on that type totally. of totally. You know? mm-hmm. So you're doing something good there. I love it. So you just had a book launch out recently. Yep. So maybe tell us a little bit about that, what it's about. And sure. I know you want to, we want to make sure we get a plug in for that. For <laughs> Thank you. So my book is called Real Vibes Only Unapologetic Confessions of a Hot Mess Mompreneur. And it's it's just a compilation of short stories from my life of things I've gone through, things I've overcome. Um, some are pretty intense, some are kind of in the middle, some are lighter, but it's really just the whole goal of this. And there's such different stories, but the goal kind of, I didn't know what I was going to write when I started writing. These just poured out of me and then became this book. But really, I hope to inspire other women, other entrepreneurs, other busy people that, you know, we've all gone through hard times in life and you will get through. It won't break you. You will come out stronger on the other side. And just to give hope and really to say, be authentic and real. Like, why are we, especially as women, like trying to be perfect and why as moms, like, why are we trying to think we have, we're alone and we're suffering in silence and we have to be perfect. That's like to find actual true connection and be happy and be fulfilled. Maybe we should just be honest and you know, find our tribe so we can be honest. And it's not like you're sitting there complaining all the time, but if you need a day to do that, do it and, and have that safe person that you actually can do that with. Right. And, but have people building you up and supporting you and just being real. And you know, this, in this world of like fake Instagram, like, you know, it's, they're making people feel bad about being real or feeling like guilt or shame because they don't, we don't look like them. We're never going to look like them. They're so, it's so fake, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like, I, I remember what the whole title was. I just like the hot mess mom part. I like it. Yep. And there's a lot of hot mess. I think the first, <laughs> the first chapter is called, if you're a perfect mom, don't read this. And then I list all the crazy things and they're pretty crazy that my two sons have done that week in like, yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, and so. if you have boys, we know there's <laughs> never a dull moment for no. sure. And my little one, we call the honey badger. He's crazy and I love him, but he's insane. And the stuff, I'm actually going to write a children's book about him because he has like run away naked. And my neighbor texted me a picture saying, you got a streaker. He was three. He climbed a five foot wooden fence and ran away butt naked. So he did that. He bought like a $1,500 dirt bike on Amazon. He does like the most random things. And I'm like, oh, please just like take it easy on me, child. Mm. I, Mm -hmm. that's so funny. I feel like, I feel like boys, I have two girls and then my youngest is a boy. And I feel like they're just a little bit different. Yeah. They're a lot different. (laughs) Um, Yeah. They do different things. And Mm -hmm. my, my son's done maybe that crazy, but I feel like he has done some pretty crazy things. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. please just stop. Just, don't just I know no. my, my older son was like, Oh mom, are you going to write a book about me? And I was like, um, Hey bud, like think of all the stuff your brother does and like all the material he's giving me, you know, like, for, like I got probably 20 books for that kid. Okay. And he's like, thank you later. He might be, he's like, I get it. He's like, I, yeah, actually, I, I I get what you're saying. It's okay that you don't yeah. write a book about me. Exactly. Because it's like the little one's got so much content. When they get older, he's going to be like, maybe they want to know all that stuff. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so great. I love it. So good. So good. Yeah, I, I love what you're doing. What do you feel like? I mean, you, you've talked, you know, talked about starting all this up mm-hmm. as a new mom or not say new mom, but a mom new in the entrepreneur space. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like some of maybe like some of the biggest challenges were for you that you had to Mm -hmm. really kind of, and it's an ongoing, I know these challenges, you know, anytime we're in business are kind of constant, but maybe some things that you for a new person, maybe coming in that wants to start a company, some Mm -hmm. new things that you had to overcome. Entrepreneurs, are you ready to level up your leadership skills? Tune in now for an exclusive offer designed just for you. This is nuts. Did you know 63% of consumers prefer businesses aligned with their values? Recognizing your core values isn't just vital for business growth, it's the bedrock of effective leadership. Whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or an aspiring creator, identifying your core values is a key step in constructing the framework of a successful leader, enabling you to lead authentically, expand your business, and live life on your terms. 
go 100 all day. Put on the pedal, no brakes. Are you ready to access tools to kickstart your leadership journey? Unlock a treasure trove of insights and get your free resources at www.linktree forward slash Jennifer Loading. Take that crucial first step toward realizing your leadership aspirations and elevate your leadership game today. Yeah, probably the biggest things is having boundaries for your time. Like I early on in the business, like pretty much every banker, insurance person, certain people want email me, Hey, can we have coffee and chat? I just want to see how I can support you. And I used to go to all of them. And then I realized how valuable my time is and that I literally do everything in the company and I don't have time for that. Right. It's a, it's truly a waste of my time. It's a waste of their time. Cause guess what? I'm not, I will drive my car off a cliff if I ever have to switch commercial insurance again because it's her, it's horrible. I don't, I just hate it so much or banks. So I'm like, I nicely say no. Like it's just, I have to pick what I'm doing and make sure whatever meeting or event, like, is it actually worth my time? Am I getting new clients? Am I learning or growing in some way? Am, am I, is it inspiring me? And if it's not those things, then just say no. It's, it's going to be fine. And then also I would say you have to make your schedule so that you are fulfilled because it is draining. It is crazy. Like being in construction today, my phone rang at 6am. It was my employee. It was like snowing. So we, you know, I had to call the client at 6am today. Yeah. So my days start early, but I get up usually really early. I go to the gym first thing I'm home by 7am when my family's still sleeping because that is what I need to do for me before normally my phone starts ringing at 7am, you know? So it's like, I got that in. I have to get out in the sunshine. I have to do things that fill me up and have to build those in because the day is going to get away from you. Like it just is, you know, when you're doing a million things, but like you have to first build your life, like what you want it to be first and your non-negotiables that fill you up, make you feel healthy and happy and, and fill in the work around it. Right. Otherwise, like what's the point of being successful in however many years when your health is failing, you're getting divorced, your kids hate you. Like that's not success to me. If the right. company appears successful, but everything else is falling apart. Like it, to truly be happy, you have to do it now right now and build it in. And then it's actually enjoyable and not every day is, but you have to, that's your goal going into each day. Right. You said two very, two amazing things there. One of those I work on with people on all the time and that's trying to create that harmony, right? It's like mm -hmm. trying to teach them sustainable habits so that they can take their business for the long haul, but also not compromise those values yeah. that you're talking about. So I think that's so important because you know, I ask this question all the time and people like, how do you define success? And a lot of times they'll, you know, they're mo for most people that I, that I feel are truly successful, it's that they're living life on their terms, meaning yes. they're able to do the things that they enjoy doing, make money at the things mm -hmm. that they enjoy doing, but live their life the way they choose to construct it. I think yeah. the other thing that I like that you said is that you have to design it. Like you have mm -hmm. to create it to live it. Right. Because I think so often I, I would say probably nine. I, I did a podcast with a guy on my show and he, I, I asked the question, like how many people, I can't remember how he posed it, but it was how many people do you feel like are truly successful? And he says like mm -hmm. 2%. So we call it the 2%er club, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. that means 98% of people go through life really waiting for things to be right, to design the life. Like they and wait they'll never. Needed. Yeah. And then the, uh, they'll be at the end of the life and they'll be like, oh, I didn't even yeah. live my life. I wasn't happy. I wasn't fulfilled. Right. It's like a runaway train. Like right. bring the train back, get off the train and create, you know, your thing. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. so many, I, it's sad that so many people live like that. Yeah. Well, and I think honestly, Chelsea, I think it's because they don't know what they don't know. Right. Like I, yeah. I feel like when you get into a place where you I don't know. I don't want to, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, how to articulate it. But I think when you get into a place where you realize how you define success, right? Like mm -hmm. what that looks like to you. And for me, what that is, is those things I told you, it's being able to do the things I love. It's being able to live yep. within my values, not compromise, right? You mm -hmm. talked about that well being part. That's yep. a very big part of my life. And a lot of that is because I do have a chronic condition that I, that I deal with, a health condition. 
that my priority has to be that I have to make sure I exercise, make sure I sleep, yes. make sure I get in my time for myself, my detox, whatever you want to call that time. Mm -hmm. Because when those things get compromised, my health is compromised. But it's yeah. also those things we talk about, like with our family, if vacations are important to us, our children, mm -hmm. right? All of those things. And, and I just think that yeah, we wait for all the things to be right when the things are never going to really be right until we yeah. decide to put those things first and make them right. Absolutely. It's like learning to live in the messiness, the messy chaos, but that's beautiful now because it will, life will never be perfect. And if it is, quote, perfect, that means you're like not living it. You're not like pushing yeah. yourself. It, I mean, that just sounds boring to me. Like, it's, 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 you know what I mean? Girl. Like, I always tell my kids, like, we're weird. We don't want to be perfect. That's boring. You know, like we're weirdos kids. And they're like, yeah, yeah mom. Funny. I had a mentor that I worked with for a couple of years and he used to always talk about this in business. And like I said, he's like, if you don't have a fire burning, it's somewhere in your business, you are not growing. Right. And I right? think that's yeah. how life is. If you, it doesn't mean you go out and dig in, bring in chaos in your life, mm -hmm. but it means that the life is the whole thing is a journey. Everything that yeah. we, every step we take, every day we get up, Every day we breathe is a journey. Mm -hmm. And if you're sitting on the sidelines with this perfect every single day, then you're stuck in a non-growing pattern. And, if, mm -hmm. and maybe that's okay for you. There's nothing wrong with that if it is yeah. okay for you. But for people like you and I who want to yeah. grow, and I imagine most of the listeners that are listening to this show, mm -hmm. we all want to be growing. We want to continue to thrive. Yeah. And that means there's going to be a little messy in the middle of the period. Totally. Like we aren't meant to live mediocre lives. Like, I, we are not meant to do that. Like we will live in, we'll be like nervous and doing things that scare us. Cause that's who we are. We want to be pushing ourselves and growing. Like, I don't, I have a million things to do and I'll, I'll try to get some stuff off the to-do list, but then I'm like, Ooh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, I just, it's like, I don't think I'll ever not having, not like stop having a massive to-do list because I keep thinking of new things that I want to do. I'm like, Oh, stop it. But I can't, I, I just can't. <laughs> the minute things start to settle down, I'm like, maybe we should shake something up on the podcast or maybe right. we should change the title for this. Let's maybe change everything. Let's just go just change it all up. And then I, then I get bored and I'm like, let's just put it all back again. So, right. I know. I was talking to a guy before, uh, earlier today and he was like, if we're talking about creators and stuff mm -hmm. and how when you're in the entrepreneur space and you're kind of a, a creator, all of us, I think have a little bit of creative yeah. in, us in some way that we just continually, we, we get to a place where we can be okay with who we are, but we like creating and we mm -hmm. like manifesting things. And yeah. it doesn't mean that we're necessarily unhappy. It just means no. that we enjoy, like I told him, I said, for me, I don't know about you, but I love ideas when people, when somebody, I'm like a sucker for an idea. If somebody mm -hmm. calls me up and they're like, Hey, I have an idea. Like I'm excited. Like, You're like, Ooh. <laughs> oh, I know. Tell me. Do I need to know about it? <laughs> I have to like you say no to a lot of things because mm -hmm. I can't be a part of all of them, but I love ideas and I love yeah. telling me things are creating. And so, um, yeah, there's so much goodness in all that, that you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots to be said about all of it. Keep those mm -hmm. priorities in place, right? Yep. Design. So you're doing cool things. So you got a podcast about to launch here pretty soon. You're excited about yep. that. You're trying to get the name for that. You want to tell I, us a little bit about it, what's going to be happening with that? Yeah, I'm literally, this is not my zone of genius, is thinking of names for things. It's really, I'm, I just feel bad at it. You know, when you know you're good at something, I'm definitely not good at this. And I'm trying so hard, but... I'm trying to name the podcast, but really I want it. I want to do solo episodes and then with um, guests, but very similar to your show. Like I want to have inspiring people on telling stories, telling things they've been through, going through adversity. What did they learn from it? How did they get out? You know, just inspire people and also just talk about real life, you know, and not this fake stuff that we see everywhere. So yeah, it's just, I just love every time I'm on a podcast, I leave, I'm like, yes, I feel, you feel so good just connecting with people, right? Mm -hmm. Other driven, positive people. And yeah, so that's kind of the goal. Um, but yeah, I just need to fun, find the name. <laughs> you will get it, you know, and I will about podcasting, you know, I think I've met so many incredible people on these shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah over 300 people now yeah. and I tell you learn so much from them like I mm -hmm. so many things. And you hear a lot of the same things come up in different ways in different ways right? yeah yeah but I think it's it's 
so fun being in that because like if mm-hmm. you have nobody to talk to, just do a couple episodes, like you get your cup filled in a day and it's like, oh, totally. I, never, I never had to leave my house to do it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's such a good thing. And I think with mm-hmm. all the world, there's so much negativity out there that mm-hmm. it's fun when you get to have positive things to put out there. And that's what I like doing. That's why I like talking yeah. to people like you, because I yeah. think just don't hear enough of that. Yeah. It's inspiring. The world's like heavy and just cold and sad and like depressing every time that I run from the news, like literally run. I hate it so much, but my husband loves it. And I'm always like more death and destruction. And then I like run out of the room because I hate it so much. And it's like, cause I'm an empath and I like, I'll hear a story accidentally or accidentally read it. And then I'll cry about it for months. And I'm like, why did I read that? I'm like, no. I feel like it's so funny you say that because a lot of times my, my husband has like a couple things, you know, we're in Texas. So he has a couple things. It's like politics, Yo. gun shows and self-help. You know, I need to give a damn. I'm okay with the self-help, but after a day of, you know, a whole day of doing that, like yeah. I'm done. I need out of that. I don't want to look at guns and I don't want to hear any politics. Oh, I so hate I'm talking about politics too. Ugh. We got on tonight. Which one are we doing tonight? Are we going to start cycling them? Are we going to go through the cycle of <laughs> Can we maybe just put some trash on for a while? Yeah, like mindless, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a new thing or something. I'm like the gun show. Like, how many times can we look at the gun? They look yeah. Like really, my husband would love that. I'd be like, oh yeah. my god, seriously. Yeah, I'm like, y'all kind of look the same. I don't know. What do we? He's like, no, this one's better. Just go by yourself. Ugh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like so I'll go do something guess. fun. <laughs> And I, and I am an empath too. So I do that with an, like the animal things. Like I see animals mm-hmm. and stuff like, you know, they come over my, my thing and I'm like, ah, yeah. I'm like, why did that? I see that? Yeah. It's so bad. Well, I'm excited for your podcast because I think it's going to be great. You will get that title Thank figured you. out. You know, I, I have, I have become an avid fan of the chat GPT these days and funny story. I was trying yes. to create a title for anybody out there listening to this. I was trying to create a new title for my business cards because I went from doing you know, I was in Mary Kay for 22 years. So I was like an affiliate marketer. I was a mm-hmm. consultant and I went to affiliate marketer. And then I was trying to figure out like, what do I put for the type of coach that I am? Because I'm mm-hmm. a hybrid between like a life coach and a business coach. I can mm-hmm. do both, but mm-hmm. I do more of like what I told you, where I'm trying to teach people how to bring the two together. It's not just yeah. about learning how to do your business, but how do you navigate your life? And yep. so I was like in chat GPT, I kept typing in like, give me a title for this. Give me a title for this. And I finally, it gave me like, success maven. I was like, eh, I don't know about the maven, but then I got success architect. And Ooh, I liked I like it that. because I kept using the word architect in my program that like I was teaching mm. them a framework of architecture mm. on how to design their business in alignment with their life. And it's this whole yeah. program. So I ended up I like up that. success architect. And then somebody told me they're like, I kind of like that title. Yeah. I like that a lot. Like like mindset coach or leadership. Mm-hmm. Coach. It's different, but it's cool. It's still, yeah. I like that. All of those, but it's a little different. People, so then people yep. are like, what's a success architect? And I'm like, well, you want, we'll talk about it. <laughs> it's really yeah, it like invites conversation. And I actually am using chat GPT to try. I, the other day I just wrote down all the words that I like describe the person I'm talking to and that, and then I put them in, I'm like, create podcast names for this. And I have like, 60 to go through and but i'll probably it's more i'm just using it for inspiration to like pick and choose but yeah i'm i have a friend just told me about that like nine months ago i'm like what's Mm -hmm. this i like i live under a rock i don't know any of the cool stuff or tech but it's amazing. It's really impressive. Yeah, you can get you when you get ready to do. That's a whole another conversation we can have when you get mm-hmm. ready to do the podcast. Oh my gosh, you can do your bot. I mean, so much. Yes, can, and with your title, you may even like you said, inspiration is kind of. I think that's what I ended up doing. I ended up pulling like a. It wasn't like it said success architect, it but you saw it. Mm-hmm. But you know, I kind of. It's kind of like in that was sesame the T O O two. Yeah, yeah, right. But it gives you ideas and helps you maybe think differently than what my brain is doing, which is not good. Probably, I think we get so. You know, I had a guest come on my other show that was talking about the right brain and the left brain. Mm-hmm. And we get so task oriented. Yeah, the creative side of our brain sort of goes in stall mode. It and does. That's why you have a yeah. hard time. So I found that you know, for for I don't know how you are, but sometimes when I need to be creative, I have to do it like at weird times, like when I'm walking mm-hmm. the dogs or like when I'm not really working on yeah work stuff, you know, or in that zone to be task oriented. Mm-hmm. Like no way, it's not happening. 
Yeah. Or I, that I have to do that or like physically move yeah. away from my office because like in my office, it's like work, you know what I mean? I'm just right. sitting here working. And so I have to maybe go to a coffee shop or do, you know, when I was writing my book, I'd take my laptop to the coffee shop and be like, focus, write for an hour or two, because sitting in my office at home, for some reason, I'm just like stalled. It's yeah. very odd. Yeah, yeah. Just change it up, change the energy. This is mm -hmm. good. All right. Well, one last question I want to ask you before I ask you, how do people find you? Any like parting words you want to give to somebody that's maybe going to be out there and they're going to start something? I don't know whether it's a new business. Maybe they want to go into construction. Anything that you want to offer them mm -hmm. to say, maybe this is what I would do. So I would say if you're thinking of starting a business, first of all, do it. It's amazing, but it's not going to be easy. So you better like better buckle up. You're going to, it's, it's going to take some grit. It's like my son start, started a smoothie company the other day, my seven-year-old. And then he gave up after one day because he only had the male lady as his client. And I'm like, oh, child, you will never make it as an entrepreneur if you just gave up right there the first day. And, uh, you know, so n be in it for the long haul. Success will not happen overnight, but you can actually make your life amazing and joyful and fulfilled what you want. And then I would say, surround yourself with people who are doing what you're doing, who are doing what you want to do and doing it well, become friends with them, have them be your mentor, call them when you're like, something happens and you don't know what to do, like lean on those people because they're out there and they had mentors or people that helped them too. And most of them are happy to get back. So that's good. That's good. Thank you for sharing that, Chelsea. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good stuff. I'm excited for you and keep doing Thank your you. thing. You're like rocking it. I love it. Love the energy. <laughs> love the, just love all the stuff about you. you got it Thank you. On. If our audience wants to get in touch with you, maybe they want to pick up a copy of the book, follow the podcast. It's going to be coming out. Where mm -hmm. do you want us to send them? Um, I would say just check out my website. It's uh, chelseahusum.com. So C-H-E-L-S-E-A-H-U-S-U-M.com. Um, I have a free, um, it's your unapologetic life workbook I just put on there. Um, you can find out there's links to like my socials, speaking, podcast, book, all that stuff on there. That's probably the best way to connect. Perfect. Well, I'm going to connect with you too. So I can, yeah. you when your podcast comes out and all that good stuff, it's been amazing. Thank you for sharing with us and your journey. Like I said, you're doing cool things. Keep Thank you. All that fun stuff. This is so good to chat with you. Thank you. Absolutely. And of course, to our audience, we enjoy you and appreciate you for checking us out. If you love the show, head on over to Apple. Give us a review there. You can hit that subscribe button on YouTube so we can keep sharing all these incredible stories. And as I always say, in order to live the extraordinary, you must start. Every start begins with a decision. You guys take care. Be safe. Be kind to one another. And we will see you next time. Uh -huh.